afford? Really? Is this what you call affordable? This is what you think Americans can actually afford today? Take a look at this. All right, folks, we are here at the Detroit Auto Show, and Ford is proud of themselves. We're looking at an expedition. Entry level option, 55,000, yada, 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 yada. What is the price on this car? $83,360. Let me go back. 8336, 836, whatever. 85. 84. They're not actually starting at 7. The automakers are out of control, Dad. We told you before, you can't raise your prices 61% and expect people to stay in the market and try and buy your vehicles. You just can't. Come on, Jeep. Come on, Ford. All these automakers, Dad, even Mazda, Hyundai, so many of them are struggling to sell cars right now. And we have some pretty breaking news, man. New vehicle inventory passes 3 million units in stock for the first time in four years. Years. It was only a few years ago, Dad, when new vehicle inventory stood at over 800,000 vehicles, just at 800,000 vehicles. Before the pandemic, new vehicle inventory was close to 4 million vehicles, Dad, and we have finally bounced back and broken through a ceiling. We are over 3 million vehicles in inventory again. Customers are refusing to buy overpriced and expensive vehicles, and they are sitting there forcing incentives to rise. The car market reset is happening, isn't it? Well, to a certain degree. Here's the problem. The dilemma is that we now have the largest inventory levels that we've had in four years, but it's the wrong inventory that is making up the inventory levels. The American public wants to have vehicles $20,000 and less. Okay, there are hardly any vehicles available that are new that can be purchased for that. 15% of the population says we need a new car, $20,000 or less. If, if one-tenth of one percent of all transactions fall under that price range, it's a lot. The problem is that the stack of inventory we have is priced somewhere between fifty dollars and $80,000. I'm not good at math, but that's at least thirty dollars to $60,000 above what the American public wants to spend. The top 10 slowest selling cars in the United States of America have an average selling price of $66,034. Now, Dad, the top 10 fastest selling vehicles in the United States of America, their average transaction price, just under $49,000. So not necessarily a huge gap there, but I think $11,000 speaks volumes to what consumers want, which is affordability. And you just mentioned it before. Edmunds came out with a study earlier this year that showed just how big the divide is between those who want to pay 20, 25, under $30,000 and how many transactions actually take place at those price points. So that is forcing change in the industry, Dad. Big, big change. Incentive spending is up to 7.7% on average of the vehicle transaction price. That is up from about 2% during the pandemic. And pre-pandemic, Dad, it was only about 8 to 10%. So we're kind of back in the sense of how much money the automakers have to spend to try and incentivize the purchase of their vehicles. And the timing couldn't be better. It's the end of 2024 when you're watching this video. This is the best time to buy a new vehicle because dealers are trying to hit their volume objectives and manufacturing have saved up a bunch of money all year long for incentives. So kind of good news that the market's kind of like, I don't know, the bubble's finally bursting. Like we should see prices come down, maybe not to $20,000 down, but they should start to go down, right? For the first time ever, CarEdge Concierge Car Buying Service is $100 off. You have until December 2nd to take advantage of this great opportunity at CarEdge.com slash concierge. We, we should see prices coming down. We should. Are they going to come down at the rate that we need them to come down? More than likely not. It's really kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the MSRP or the incentive? Okay, the fact that manufacturers are willing to spend 7.7% .7 of the transaction price to get you to buy the damn vehicle, I don't know, indicates to me that all the vehicles that they're selling are at least 7.7% .7 too high as far as the MSRP is concerned. So... Would they need to spend that type of money on incentives if they lowered across the board MSRPs by 10%, 12%, 15%, whatever it is? I have said for years and years and years, instead of having MSRP, we should have what the actual transaction prices have been, and that's what you sell the damn car for. That, that becomes the price. But the good news is, at least we're seeing prices come down a tad and we're seeing incentives go up and hopefully we'll see that continue.
little more good news. If you're in the market for a compact SUV, 9.4% is the average amount spent on incentives to try and get you into that vehicle. There are 25 different models that are competing for sales in the compact SUV segment and an average transaction price of under $37,000. So I'm looking at you, Mazda. I'm looking at you, Hyundai, Kia. There are some brands out there, and obviously with Chevy and and others like there are some brands out there, dad, that are really struggling for market share in a competitive segment and incentivizing significantly at a sub forty thousand dollar price point. Those are some bright spots. Now, some uh, you know, not so good. Um, what's the opposite of a bright spot? A dull spot. <laughs> Those are the bright spots, Dad. Now some dull spots. Let's look at Jeep. You mentioned it at the beginning. A 61% increase in MSRPs over the last five years has really led to challenges for the automaker, Dad. They actually just had to lay off 1,100 people that were uh, responsible for producing the Jeep Gladiator. The Gladiator is a $60,000 pickup truck, full-size pickup truck from Jeep, that there was a period of time where people were paying above MSRP to purchase one of these vehicles, thinking it would hold its value similar to the Jeep Wrangler, and it definitely does not, Dad. They are doing these layoffs because dealers have been refusing, refusing to take more inventory from the automaker because they're not selling. So there are some brands, Dad, and some particular types of vehicles that it's just like the glut of of inventory is too much. And then there's some other opportunities where, again, it's a bright spot. There's competition. There is a high level of inventory, and there's a high level of incentives. And you even mentioned it before, Dad, 10% off of MSRP. I'm pretty sure Jeep's offering that nationwide right now on the Gladiator, and it's still not enough. You know, I'm not sure that that the Gladiator, um, the vehicle will do as well as the Gladiator, the movie. Um, Gladiator, I mean, it's tanked. It's I, I, we Let's just be honest. It has, it has hit a wall. It's pretty much done. Um, and the reason it's pretty much done is because it's been overpriced for what it is. And people are finally recognizing it, and more and more people are realizing they can't afford it. I want to give you another future dull spot. Yeah, please. EVs. Once EV tax incentives go away, when that $7,500 tax incentive goes away, and it will be going away, well... Those EVs aren't going to be getting any cheaper or any more affordable for people out there. So what I will say is if you are presently in the market for an EV or you're considering an EV over the next two or three months, um, well, really, you probably have no more than two months in order to take advantage of any incentives that there are. As we've always said, end of year is the best time to buy a new car. So I wouldn't even say two months that I'd say over the next five or six weeks. And right now, during this market reset, EV inventory is growing. The average incentive spend is 13.7% of the average transaction price when you factor in those government incentives that on an EV. So you're talking about getting almost 14% in incentives just off of the uh, uh, average transaction price for an electric vehicle. And again, you can negotiate the best deal here between now and the end of the year. So yeah, if if I'm in the market for an EV, the market resetting is one of the best things that could have possibly happened and brings a sense of urgency, especially with some of those lease incentives that these manufacturers are pushing out there. Hyundai Ionic 6 for under 250 bucks a month with $0 down. Like That's pretty nuts, man. So big opportunities here for those that are in the market because it has reset. The bubble to many degrees has burst. And I think we are going to continue to see downward pressure on prices and increases in incentives to try and move the metal. Three million is a big deal, dad. Breaking through that ceiling is a huge deal. Not, not to tie into electricity, but EVs will see a surge in sales between now and the end of the year. If we can help you out with anything, go check out caredge.com. We're here to help dad. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you.